Yes, you did read right. I am going to be talking about Space Marines today. Yes, I am a Space Marines fan myself. I play the Dark Angels. And this video is going to be about my favorite old style models that Warhammer 40,000 used to have in Space Marine form. Now, let's get on with the video. Now just let's jump right into this video. I'm going to be talking about the first Space Marine Captain I ever had after I bought the Dark Vengeance box set during 6th edition. This guy right here. Back in 6th edition, all the Space Marine Captains. So this guy is a Space Marine Captain, and he's part of the Dark Angels as you can tell. All of the Captains did have a name attached to them. So every chapter had their own named captain and this guy is Belthazar. Yes, being part of the Dark Angels, you've probably noticed that most of the names that they have are biblical names. This guy is a space marine captain of the Dark Angels. He is a firstborn marine. He is not a primaris marine. And what I liked about older models like this is look at the detail that is on him. You can see the wings on his helmet, how his sword is the other Dark Angel's itography that is on him. And then the robe. Just the robe covering most of him. You can barely tell that he's a space marine besides the helmet and the backpack. And then even with the back view, you can see the nice robe he's wearing and wearing a cloak on top of it, the purple cloak. And then you can also see his bolter with a plasma, like a plasma attachment so he can fire off plasma shots. And then you can see more stuff. This guy is just really covered in a lot of things. And that's what makes this guy amazing. And that's what I love about him. He is so detailed because he is your character model. He is the leader of your force. He is your HQ. And hell, and how else are you going to make an HQ besides making them like noticeable from the common sh uh, the common soldiers just running around. You put a lot of stuff on him, make him look fancy, make him look important. But in the actual lore is Belthazar. He ended up dying because of some stuff happened. And then who took his place was Lazarus. He is a Primaris Marine. He was one of the first Primaris Marines that were given to the Dark Angels. But with that all said and everything, so we're going to go on to the next step. And I'm going to show you some other models that I like. And yeah, there's no ranking. There's nothing along this that has any ranking. I'm just showing you a few of the models I really like. And this is one of the models I like a lot myself. I do play this model quite often because it's one of my favorite captains and it was my first captain I ever got for the Dark Angels. But alrighty then, with that all said, I'm going to be moving on. Now this unique looking vehicle is the Grandmaster of the Raven Wing in a land speeder. And just in general, land speeders I miss too. I am a Dark Angels player. One of my favorite factions inside of them, yes, Dark Angels do have three really different factions you can play as, is the Raven Wing. It is a fast moving, pure, like all mounted army. And this specific model that I am showing you, this is uh, Samael in a Saber Claw. A Saber Claw is just his own custom version, his own personal land speeder. And dude, land speeders were great. You can see it is a vehicle. His personal version had two assault cannons. And then, but one issue is that the heavy bolter is supposed to be a double heavy bolter. So all of his weapons had twin link. And that was amazing. And then he was able to, yeah, he was a leader. He could lead the armies, do what he needs to do. But in general, land speeders were great. I loved uh, this one because you could really customize it, put a lot of nice stuff on it, make it fancy looking, make it all nice. And then the other land speeders are the same model, 
just without all the fancy stuff. So just take away the book, take away that nice little statue on top. The driver guy does not have a sword, and it does not have a twin heavy bolter and a twin assault cannon. So they were a little bit more basic, but you could have them in squads of three. They were able to move quite a large distance. Like the average movement of a land speeder is 16 inches. And then with uh, with it being in the saber claw, they were able to get an extra six inches. So they were able to move 22 inches on the field with uh, three th- three land speeders in the squad. And they were very cheap vehicles. They were about 90 points each. So on a 2,000 point list, you can bring about a bit over 20. And... They were cheap vehicles, they were a moving weapon platform, and there was other models that had rockets, so you could also take out heavier targets. And they were a great distraction unit. But, with this uh, specific model here, is they did carry it on, keep it around, and it was in the form of the Talon Master. So it's the Lieutenant version, so it's the, yeah, the Lieutenant version of a Ravenwing Lieutenant. I probably said that really weird. It felt like I said it weird, but yeah, that's it. As you see the pictures flipping back and forth, you can see that they are both the same base model, but some of them have some fancier stuff on it, different things like that. The Talon Master pretty much uh, in the lower Samael gave, gave the Saber Claw to the Talon Master so we could use that. And while he just uh, drove around in his jet bike. But that's one model I really like. I really miss that they re- they don't have that anymore. Having a name character in a land speeder and land speeders in general, they don't have anymore. But with that said, now let's move on to the next one. The older style metal Dark Angel Masters. Like this guy right here. So back in the day during Rogue Trader... So we're talking about Warhammer 40,000 First Edition. Back in that time period, there were Primarchs there. Yes, Primarchs are not new. Primarchs have been around for a very long time. First and second editions, and even some third editions, they did have the Primarch models. They had Lehman Rust, they had Rogodorn, and they had the Lion. So... This model, I have seen a lot of people actually say it's the lion or this other model, the guy with the cloak. If you look, they both have the same helmet and they both have some big, like big old swords. We're talking about like, yeah, some big old honky swords to fight with. I've seen people say, hey, these guys are the lion. Oh, this is the old version of the lion. You can play it as a lion. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. When I played some games, I've actually used these guys on a huge base and saying it's like, hey, this is the lion. They're like, what? Yeah, this is the lion back in the day when he was a tiny metal version, when he was just a little bit bigger than all the other space marines. And yeah, uh, I have yet to meet anyone saying like, no, you have to use that current model that costs you $300 to buy. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's not that expensive. I'm just exaggerating, but these models, I like them. They're funny. They're goofy. They're firstborn marines, but just look at them compared to the other marines. These guys are just no like they have so much more detail. They look so much better. They don't look as as squant as the other marines. And these guys, yeah, it's before the tactical rock came around. It was menacing pose or triumph the pose. That's how they had their leaders. And this guy, for example, he has a banner. You can tell he is the leader model because he has a back banner. Not all Marines in general, but the Dark Angels specifically. All of their ranked models, their captain models and above... They all have a back banner. It is something that is big, something that is important, and it shows them out. Because, yeah, in real life, a big old banner is just a target, and it slows you down and gets in the way. But, dude, this is the far future. We're talking about super-powered, crazily buff super soldiers in power armor, 
fighting with swords that are twice her size or big as a surfboard. And yeah, it, it's fun. It was the grim, dark silliness. And yeah, that's how the older models were and the older Warhammer was. It was a grim, dark silliness of having crazy models, bright colors, and just noticeables like, hey, this is my captain model. And yeah, he looks like the other guys, but fancier. He has better shoulder pads. He has a cooler helmet. He has more gold and more symbol tree and better stuff on him like cloaks and things. But yeah. Is that one model I do miss? They don't have anymore. They, GW, trying to get rid of the old style Marines, and it's their IP. They can do that, but the fact is, I'm going to keep these guys around because in about 10 more years, when no one knows about what firstborn Marines are, and I bring these guys out, they're like, dude, that's a tiny Marine, but he looks so cool. It's so old. Yeah, it's made out of metal. But alrighty then, I'm going to move on to the next guy that I really like and wish they had around still. And this lovely guy in a robe here and with a big back banner is not a captain. He is Ezekiel. He is the Grandmaster of the Librarius. And yeah, he does have the rank of Grandmaster, but with Space Marines in general, is he is not technically in the ranking level as a... Like, as the other Marines are, Lieutenant, Captain, stuff like that, Sergeant ranking, he's a librarian. They have their own little ranking system and stuff. So, for the military people, if you guys uh, if you guys were in the military, it'll be easier for you to understand this, or you can just research it. It is very similar to the officers and the warrant officers. Yes, the warrant officers are... They have their own little ranking, but they're completely separate from what they're doing. Warrant officers have their own little jobs that they do that are completely different than leading soldiers. They are more geared to like mechanics or keeping stuff up or doing research, things like that. Which the librarians are very similar. They're librarians. Their biggest thing is keeping track of the relics, items, and history of the marines. And this guy is Ezekiel. And yes, once again, another named character who has a biblical name. And yeah, this guy is a librarian. One of my favorite... Well, I use this model all the time whenever I use a librarian. Because, dude, look at him. He looks so cool. He has this big old four sword holding it with two hands. He has a cloak covering his head. You can see the mechanical tubes that's like the mask that's covering his face. He has a he has like two books on him, has a chain, has this big old banner that's all fancy with a little book on it. And then on his banner, it's the exact same book that is on top of the banner that's in the banner. So he has like both of them there. And then he also has that big old demon skull or librarian skull, whatever that they have, all the librarians have. But yeah. And then he also has a skull on both of his goglets. This guy is detailed. This guy is awesome looking. I I like him. He is one of my favorite captains. One of my favorite, not captains, but one of my favorite models that I use. I don't know if they still have him around actually. But if they do, they probably moved him over to become a Primaris like they've done with everything else. I don't have anything wrong with the Primaris, but... Like, I don't have any real issue with the models of the Primaris. They look great. They look fun. I like them. I do use Primaris in, in my armies because they are nice looking models. But the fact is that the Primaris kind of went downhill. Because with the Marines, instead of them having all these different units, it's like, Oh, hey, we're the Flamer units. Oh, hey, we're the guys that use Meltas. Oh, hey, we're the guys that use rocket launchers. Is no. You had a tactical squad. Where it's, you had a tactical squad or a devastator squad. If you wanted a squad that would that would be able to do multiple things and to really move out and do stuff, you would have a tactical squad and you would put a heavy bolter or a rocket launcher or a plasma gun or a flamer. Like uh, those are the specialty guys in it. And then with the devastator squad, those guys were the heavy weapons unit. 
There would be at least five guys in the four or five guys in there that could carry a heavy weapon, and you had other Marines around to help defend him and protect them. And they would be your heavy weapon squad. It's like, hey, I have my four or five guys with rocket launchers. They're going to be shooting and blowing up your tank. Or they're going to be blasting over there with uh, the heavy plasma cannon. Stuff like that. That's what I I don't like about the Primaries. Because they're really going Eldar-like. Because the Eldar, all their units are specialized and separate. It's like, hey... These guys are my melter guys. Hey, these guys are my sword guys. Oh, these guys are my flamer guys. It's kind of like, dude, come on. Uh, just let the armies have their own special thing. The Eldar was known for having their specialists, their aspect warriors. And with the current iteration of 40k is that they are really making... They're making the Primaris seem like they're marine aspect warriors. Oh, all righty then, but enough of that rant is now on to a little bit more about Ezekiel. What I miss the most about this guy is you could choose spells. Because yeah, in the, like the first few older editions, yeah, you had to stick with these spells. But then around 7, 8, 9th is, hey, you had multiple spells. You just didn't have one blast, one shot, one psychic spell that you could use. They had multiple you could have defensive, you could have offensive, you could have support spells, things like that. But, with that all said, and the video is going on longer than I thought it would be, I'm going to be ending the video here. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, the Dark Angels are better than Space Wolves, and most importantly of all, always love the Kelhound. You all take care now.